Again, welcome to Java Programming 1. In this section, we're going to discuss about user-defined classes. Again, we discussed already about Java built-in class, such as the math class, and the string class, etc. And this section, again, we're going to learn how to build our own classes. So this topic is user-defined classes. Our objective is to learn about classes, learn about private, protected, public, and also static members of a class, and also explore how classes are implemented. And that's our main objective of these lectures, how we can implement classes in Java programming language and also learn about various operations on classes. So this is an example of a class. We know class consists of two things. They are data members, which again, tell us the characteristics or the attributes of the class object. And also they are methods. The methods tell us the behavior or the tasks of the class object. And we'll see an example soon, but let's say, for example, if we have a class name employee, the characteristics of employee can be the last name, the first name, address, pay rate, etc. Now, the behavior of an employee can be, employee can be late to work, uh, employee can get salary, pay salary, so we have to calculate the salary of employee, etc. So in the class string, our data members or the various variables will be strings to store strings somewhere in the variable. Then the behavior will be we can compare two strings or we can concate one string to another. Concate means to join. So join two strings together or compare two strings together. Or which we can change the characters of a string to lowercase. So we have a method to lowercase. Again, these are the built-in method in a string class. We also have to uppercase or char out to check the character or position of the character of each string. So again, a class consists of two things. They are data members and also they are methods. So when we are going to again, define our own or create our own class, the first thing we should know is that we use the keyword class. So a class, uh, everything is lowercase class. It's a reserve word. And also collection of fixed number of components. The components are the member of a class. And the member of a class can be either the variables or the methods. And also we say the class categories or modifiers can be private, protected, and public. So what is a private? A private means if we declare any members of the class as a private, it means it cannot be accessed outside the class. Only the members of that particular class can directly access it. So this is what we call encapsulation for security. So I may have a, a class members in the class and I don't want any outside class or program to access it. Most of the time we make our instant variables or the variables that we declare in the class level as private because we want our data to be secure. And most of the methods, we keep it as a public unless the method is a service method, which means it delivers service to the only the within the class that is defined then we can make it a, a private. So a public again means any class members in another class or in the, within the program, any methods can have access to it. Protected is deal with what we call the inheritance. So if I have class A and B and class A inherit class members from class B, I can make the instant variable protected, which means they can directly access each other. So we say a private is a member of a class are not accessible outside the class, as we said earlier. And public means the member of the class are accessible outside the class. So public members can be accessed by any 
class in the program. But private members can only be accessed within the class that is defined. So class members can be either the methods or the variables. As we said, a class consists of two items, the characteristics of the class and the behavior of the class, which are the variables or data, and then the methods are the behavior. And variables members declare like any other variable. So this is a general sentence for defining a class. We have our modifiers. The modifiers can be either private, protected, and public. Then with the modifiers, the next we use the, the keyword class. Then the class identifiers will be the name of the class. Then we'll, we can also have modifiers. Then within the close, open and close parentheses, which is the body of the class, we have the class members. So here we are going to again declare the class variables and the methods. And if you write, we can implement it, the methods here also. So we'll see an example soon. Now here we say, if a member of a class is named constant, then we declare it just like any other name constant. And we use the keyword fana. Also, if a member of a class is a variable, then we declare it just like any other variable. So just the data type and the name of the variable. And if a member of a class is a method, you define it just like any other method. So we may add up the returning type, the name of the method, and its argument. If it's a static method, we have to add the keyword static. But again, a methods that are defined in a class are not static method. Static method means a method that doesn't belong to a class. But we can also use the keyword like private or public. So if a method, if a member of a class is a method, it can directly access any member of the class. That's if a, we have a member, a method in one class, that very class data members, the method can access it. So here we say, therefore, when you write the definition of a method of, of the class, you can directly access any data member of the class without passing it as a parameter. So let's look at example here. Let's say we have example, a class named clock. We know clock here, we have three data members because we know a clock may have hours, minutes, and seconds. Now it's up to us to use the modifiers here. We make sure our data is private, secured. So it can only be um, methods in this in class clock are the only method that can access it. Other class, other method in, in other classes cannot access it. So the definition will be the keyword private, the data type, and the name. So we have hours, minutes, and seconds. Then we have the methods. Based on the behavior of the clock, we can have a method to set the time. So always we can set our time, which start with hours, minutes, and seconds. Also, we can decide to get only the hours, get minutes, or get seconds. This is called the assessors. The assessors method, get methods. Then we can also print our time. We can also increment our seconds, increment our minutes, increment our hours. We can also check if we have another clock, we can check if two clocks are equal. So we have the equal method and we can see the returning time for equal is Boolean. So if the two clock time is equal, it will return true. If it's, uh, they are not equal, it will return false. Then we have also have a, a method named make a copy. This will make a copy of a clock. So if I have one clock and we have a time already, I can create a new clock and I'll assign the time of the previous clock to it by calling make a copy to again, copy the time on it. Then we also have a method named get, get copy to get a copy of the clock. 
So we can see the returning tab is an object clock because get copy will return a copy of the clock. So let's go through each method. Uh, we have what we call the constructors. Constructors, we discussed that when we were even discussing about the beauty in Java classes, because constructor is a very important method in a class. A constructor normally initialize, or we say even create the object. And we have two types of constructors, the parameters, and those without a parameters. Again, with parameters or those with no parameters. And the constructor main work is to initialize an object. So anytime we are creating a new object, we have to call a constructor to create it for us. A default constructor means there's no argument. So whatever default value is, it will create it for us. The one with parameter means we will set our initial value. For example, I can create a clock and I'll say the time is six hours. 20 minutes, 30 seconds. If I want the exact time, then I have to call the constructor with parameters and set the time in the argument. Now, if I want the time to be default, let's say 000, then I'll call the default constructor. So the constructors also, they have a special properties. And one of the common properties that the name of a constructor is the same name as the name of the class. So if I have employee class, my constructor name also be employee. Also a constructor, even though it is a method, it doesn't have no type. It doesn't expect no return type. We don't use no void, we just leave it blank. And also a class can have more than one constructor. So I may have two or more constructor based on the parameters. So I may have a constructor to set the parameters to default or set it to a specific value. And we will see an example. Actually, we call this the overriding. We are overriding the method, or in this case, the constructor. When you have two methods with the same name, but the arguments are different, it's overriding. So next also we said that if a class has more than one constructor, then any two constructors might have different signatures. Different signature means it must have a different argument. And that's, this is what we call overriding again. So constructors are automatically executed when a class object is instantiated. So anytime we create a new class object using a new keyword, construct, constructors are automatically executed. And if there are multiple constructors, which constructor execute depend on the type of value passed to the class object. So let's see our constructor. So we can see in the clock, our first constructor is default constructor. So we have clock, empty argument. So whatever the default time is, that's what to give us. Now constructor with parameter, we can set the hours and minutes and seconds as our argument and we can set it to any time. So this is our class diagram for the clock. We have three variables. Uh, we also actually with the correct term to use this instance variable. Instance variables are variables that are declared in the class level. So we can see this variable belongs to the class name clock. So it's instance variable. So we have hours, minutes, and seconds. A dash or minus means private, plus means public. So here we make sure our our millisecond data members are again private and their type is int, integer. So we have the default constructor, which is called a clock and empty argument. Then we have constructor with parameters. Here it's taking three parameters, the hours, minutes, and seconds. We also have the method set time which can change the time of the hours, minutes, and seconds. So it takes three arguments. And when it set the time, it doesn't return the time to the method. So the return type is again, void. We can see that in constructor, no return type, also no void. There's no void. 
Now get our since our is in minutes, uh, it's in uh, our is in int integer, it will return the integer. Uh, we saw here hours, minutes, seconds, they are all data type int. So the same thing applies to get minutes and get seconds. Returning types will be int. So next is the print time. Increment seconds by one, increment minutes, increment hours. We also have the equals method that we check if two clocks are equal and also make copy that will make a, a copy of a clock from an existing clock then get a copy get a copy of the clock so again this is a class clock the attributes again as we said earlier are only three because hours minutes and seconds but think about any behavior a consultant is always in any built-in class or user defined class the consultants are always call when we are creating a new object but the behavior here will be hours, get hours, get minutes, get seconds, print the time, increment the seconds, minutes, and hours. Also check if two clocks are equal or make a copy of a clock from an existing clock or get a copy of a clock. So variable declaration object instantiation, we already know how to declare variable. And as we said earlier, declaring a variable in the class level is the same as declaring a variable with a primitive type or any kind of, so the general syntax for using operator new is new the class name or new class name and the argument. So here, yeah, what I'm trying to do is to create an object, which we can also call variable. So the type is clock. So when I say clock, my clock, it means I'm just declaring the object, but I didn't create it. When I want to create it dynamically, I will use the new keyword. So clock, my clock equal to new clock. This will create a new clock object or clock your clock equal to new clock we set a time nine hours 35 minutes 15 seconds so this is a constructor the first one here the first one clock with empty argument is default constructor and the second is the constructor with arguments so variable declaration and object instantiation when we declare our variable my clock we use what a default constructor. It's right here. My clock. It's a default. My clock is a default constructor. So here, our default value is zero 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 for hours, minutes, a second. The second clock, which we call your clock, we use the constructor with the parameter. So let's go back. We can see we set the hours to nine, minutes to thirty-five, seconds to fifteen. And that's what we have here. So this is what we get. Again, hours, minutes, seconds, everything zero, 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 default. And your clock is clock with parameter we send the values. Now the syntax to access the data member of a class object or method is always the object name. So here we say the reference variable name dot the member name. So for example, in an uh, object also, we normally create the object in the main method. So I have a class name clock. We have all the necessary properties for the class clock, which is hours, many seconds, and also their methods. Now I'll go to the main method and I'll create an object type which is what we did here, uh, clock, my clock. So this small, uh, my clock is like a variable, but we use the term object. And the data type is clock, which is the class name. So we do this normally in the main method. Then here I can say my clock dot, I can set the time. Or I have the method to print time in our clock class. And since my clock is a clock class type, I can use 
any method inside the clock class. So he had decided to use the print time method in the clock class to print the content of my clock. I can also set a time for your clock. And since I have two clocks now, I can check if my clock is the same as your clock using the equals method again in the class clock. This is assignment operator. Now, when we use this statement here, what I'm trying to do is I want to assign your clock to my clock. Now, my clock is 10.28.45. Your clock hours is 7, 27 minutes, 36 seconds. But the goal is that I want to set your clock to my clock, which means I want to change my clock time to your clock. Now, when you use assignment operator, this is object-oriented concept. So you can see that when we declare primitive type, the value will stay in the memory that it is. But when we declare reference type, normally the variable there, the reference variable will consist of the address of where your items are in the memory. So we can see my clock pointing to the location where we have our millisecond, your clock is same. Now, if I assign this, instead of changing the content 7, 27, to in my clock, changing the, your clock time to my clock time, it won't do that. What it will do is that it will change the direction, the pointer of my clock to point to your clock. And it will look something like this. And normally we use the term alias. So my clock becomes alias. Alias is when we have two variables pointing to the same location. And we use the term shallow copy here. Shallow copy means two or more reference variable of the same time point to the same object. So here it's pointing to the same object. Now the next we are going to use a method copy to do what we call the deep copy. Deep copy means each, each reference variable refers to its own object. So our goal is that we want to see the 7, 27, and 36 here. Why my, my clock will point to the first object, not to point to your clock. And that's what we call the deep copy. So here we use the method make copy. So my clock dot make copy your clock. And we can see the two again are the same now and they are pointing individually to their own location where the items are stored. So next, let's look at, we can write our set time method. So we say set time take three arguments, the hours, minutes, and seconds. So here, again, it depends on uh, the person writing this program. Here, we want to make sure that Hours is from 0 to 23. And we go all the way from 0 to 23.59 or 23.59. When we get to the 60, instead of 24, we start from 0. So 24 is 0, 0, 0, 0. So because of that, we want to make sure that when we set time, we don't want to set time to 26 hours uh, if it's 24 hours and 2 hours more. So we have a condition checking here that if the hours is less than 24 and also is greater than or equal to zero, then we don't need to do anything. We just assign the hours to HR. But when we reach over 24, we want to set the hour back to zero. So if the condition is false, HR equal to zero. So if this, again, the condition here means hours can go up to 23 and hours cannot go below zero. So from zero to 23 hours. When we get to 24 hours, we start all over from zero again. So we say if it's from zero to 23, then we assign the hours to HR. Else, we assign zero to HR, which means maybe we pass 23, 24. And minutes also is up to 60 minutes. So the same thing we are checking first 
So before we set the time, we want to check if it's between zero to 59. If it's the value is between zero to 59, then set it. Otherwise, if it's more than 59, then set the minutes to zero. The same thing with seconds. Seconds should be from zero to 59. Otherwise, again, set it to zero. So definition of constructors and methods of the class, you can see my clock. And also when we say my clock dot set time 348.52, we change the time from 1236.49 to 348.52 using the method set time. So always if I want to use the method, I have to start with the object name. So this is again object oriented and the method is on static. So anytime I'm using it, I have to refer to the method I'm using it on. So this is also the get hours, we call this the assessor. So get hours will return only HR, get minutes will return the mean or minutes, get seconds will return the sec or seconds. And we can see that the returning type on the method front is int throughout because in the main class, hours, minutes, seconds are in int. Now to print the time, it's up to us. Yeah, we want to print the time very nice. So if it's a single digit, we want to put zero in the front. So it should be 0, 1, 24 or something. So we say that if the hours is less than 10, which means it's a single digit, we want to start with zero first. So we print zero then we print the rest of the HR. And see here, we don't have no space between, no space. Now, if the minutes are less than 10, the same thing also, we want to start from zero before we print the minutes. Seconds are less than 10, we want to start from zero, so it can be 10 hours, zero eight seconds, zero two minutes, or 10 hours, 40 seconds, 20 minutes. Now to increment the hours, we want to increment by one. So we use the increment operator. So HR plus plus. Now if HR is greater than 23, we don't want to go to 24, so we assign zero to HR. Increment minutes. Normal, we're going to increment the minutes using the increment operator here, N plus plus. Now we check if the minutes is greater than 59, but if the minutes is greater than 59, we start from zero again. But we have the time, the time, the highest unit is hours, minutes, and seconds. So when we reduce it to zero, which means we reach 60, we are going to increment the hours. So we call the increment hours method to increment the hours. Because 60 minutes means one hour. So we increment the hours by one. Here, like if we are dealing with, if the clock will be dealing with days, like we can say, okay, if the hour is greater than 23, then we're going to have a new day. So increment seconds to the same thing, sec increment operator, which is plus plus. But if the sec is greater than 59, set it to zero. 60 seconds is one minute, so we call the increment minutes method. So next, we want to check if two clock are equal. So we can call the, the method equals. And how do we implement it? We just check if the hours is the same, if the minutes is the same as the other clock minutes. We also check if seconds the same as the other clock seconds. If all these three values are true, then it will turn true to the method equals. So here also we say the method of the class clock continue. We say if my clock dot equal to your clock, we are checking these two clock as the same. So if this is equal to this, again, we return true. We can also do 
a make copy. Make copy means you want to do copy of the clock to a new one. So you can see other clock dot r, which is our clock. We assign it to the new clock. Other clock dot mean we assign it to the mean. Other clock dot second we assign it to the second. So what we're doing is that we have a new clock and we are assigning all the value of the older clock to the new clock. So here, this is a definition to get a copy. First, we create our temp temporary to hold our value temporary. So the type also is clock. So we have clock temp equal to new clock. We assign the HR to temp dot hours mean ten dot mean sec ten dot sec then later we return the temporary so what we are doing here again making a copy of the clock and this is the definition again clock temp equal to new clock hours minutes and second so making a copy of hours, minutes, and seconds in there. Here, the default clock, as we said, we set everything to zero. Hours, minutes, and seconds. Oh, since set time also set hours, minutes, to seconds, we can call the set time method inside the default constructor. So next is our constructor with parameters. So here we can see we set the hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, again, this the code here is the same as set time. Since the constructor with parameters means we are going to set our time of the argument when we create our new, so it's the same concept. We also want to check if the value is between zero to 23. Otherwise, we assign zero to it if it's greater than if it's 24 up. Same thing, the minutes if between zero to 50 uh, to 60 is okay, and uh, to less than 60, so 59 is okay. When you go to 60 up, then we assign zero to the mean. The same thing with the seconds also. So here we want to see an example. So we have a class name inventory and we have four data members, the name, item number, price, and unit in stock. Now we can see how we can implement different constructors. So our first constructor is default. So we set the name to nothing, empty string, item number negative one, price is 0.0, .0 unit in stock is zero. Now let's see the second. So second constructor, we only changing the name. So item num, price, unit in stock is the same default value, but the name will be different. Then third constructor, we are changing the name, the item number, and also the cost. So user have to enter the three items. The unit in stock is constant. Then the fourth, we say, okay, we are keeping changing everything. We change the name, the ID norm, the cost, and also unit and cost, and then in stock, unit in stock. And we assign the values and item, I norm, cost, and then in stock. So here we can create a new object as item one, default, item two, only the dryer, item three. We can have the name, the washer, two, three, four, five, and also the price. So the second one we have uh, 
the item number. So two, three, four, five is the item number, then the price. Then the fourth one, we have to change or set all the four items. So the name, the item number, the price, the number of item in the stock. So a copy constructor always execute when an object is instantiated. And also it will initialize and use the existing objects. That's why it's called copy constructor. So the sentence will be public class name, then the class name other object. Next we have the copy, the copy constructor continue here. We say the definition of the copy constructor for the class clock is what we are doing. We are just making a copy. So we have other clock, which is the object or that clock dot hour go to the hours, the minutes go to minutes, the seconds go to seconds. Now we saw the assessors and also mutators. Assessors is the get methods. Mutators are the set method. You can see that in a clock, instead of setting the hours, minutes, and seconds separately, we know as a clock, when we are calling the time, the hours, minutes, and seconds, we don't do it separate. They are all together as one unit. So our mutator was only one, set time. But again, we may write another program. For example, if I have a program for, let's say we have employee class and I have employee object, and employee have attribute as a, a first name, address, uh, salary level, etc. I can set last name, set first name, set the address, or set number of hours work, and also set hourly rate. So set method is called a mutator to change the value. Then assessor is to get. So here we have our class clock our three variables, our minutes and seconds. We have our default constructor initialize everything to zero. And we have constructor with, again, parameter. Normally we call this the ADT, abstract data type uh, concept. So we have the set time also, then get hours. We can get minutes and can get seconds, etc. Then we write the rest of the method. So in summary, in these lectures, we learn the basic concept of classes, object-oriented programming, what class consists of, how to implement the class. And normally, a class consists of two things. They are data members and also they are methods, and how to implement both. In our next lectures, we're going to have a lab work on it and maybe go through some code. Again, wish everybody the best. Thank you. Bye. Also, I'm going to post these lectures in my YouTube channel. So you can have a comment or like or subscribe. And uh, subscribe is better because again, if I post it in a new video in any computer science or mathematics course, you, you will be notified.